Greetings and welcome to the Developing Dad Podcast. I am your host, Michael J. Griffin Jr. And today we're going to review a video and I'm entitling this podcast, Black Women, You Are the Man. All right, but before we get started, I need you to like, comment, and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you do not miss out on any of the content that I am producing. And without further ado, to the video. Can somebody explain to me exactly what black women did to make every damn near every race, even a lot of our own black men hate us? Sure can. Took advantage of government assistance. Kate decided the house. Join the feminist train and demonize your men. Allow billions of dollars every year to exit our community on fake aesthetics of beauty. Praise Dan joined homosexual men while demonizing heterosexual men that assert themselves. Took our children away from us and used them as bargaining chips to further financially disenfranchise us. Used sex as a weapon in our intimate relationships to get what you want. Became the only women in the world to tell the world that they don't need their men. Perpetuated the trope that black women are the backbone of black communities, which directly implies that black men have no spine and are useless. Continually pushing the narrative that black women are the winners of the oppression Olympics while not having any metric of which they are treated worse than black men. Allow their weight to slip such that sexual attraction is diminished. Hot girl summer. Engaged heavily in prostitution, legal sex work, OnlyFans, etc. and then demanded that your men protect and respect you. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I can make a part two. All right. So first, we're going to assume that what he says is true. OK, we're just going to assume it. Now, does, does this mean that this is true about every black woman? Obviously not, because I'm married to a black woman and she doesn't do these types of things. OK, so let's just get that out of the way. And if 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 you're a black woman listening to this and, and this does not describe you, don't take offense. OK, so let's just get that out, that disclaimer out of the way. All right. But we're going to speak in general terms about black women as a group. So let's just, we're going to put that out there, all right? But this is not every spe specifically applied to every single black woman. Okay, all right. So I'm going to give you a parallel biblical story that I think we can use, two parallel biblical stories that I think we can use to help black women to see what the response should be if these things are true of them. Let's go to the scriptures, all right? So the first one I have is 2 Samuel uh, chapter 12. So if you know this, I'm not going to read the entire story, but I'm going to read a portion of it. Uh, David, King David, sees Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. Uh, he well, he desires her. He brings her into his chamber. He impregnates her. All right. And then she, uh, he doesn't know that he's impregnating her. She comes back and says that she is. Uh, then he decides to bring Uriah, her husband, who's out at war, back from battle to cover it up. So he's like, hey, go and enjoy yourself, lay with your wife. Uriah, who's an honorable man, says, no, I'm not going to do that if my soldiers can't do it as well. Uh, so he goes back to battle. David's like, okay, what do I do now? So he plots and schemes to have Uriah murdered. He has him uh, go to the, the, the most fierce part of the battle and then has the other troops withdraw from him and then he's killed, okay? And this is where the story picks up in chapter 12. Now let me read chapter 12, verses 1 through 7 and then verse 13. And the Lord and Yahweh sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had very many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. And he brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his morsel and drink from his cup and lie in his arms. And it was like a daughter to him. Now, there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was unwilling to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the guest who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him. All right, so now this is very important. Verse 5, Then David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said to Nathan, As Yahweh lives, the man who has done this deserves to die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity david recognizes this is the first thing that he does he recognizes that something is wrong right he doesn't realize that that nathan is talking about him because nathan's about to drop the bomb in the next verse but he recognizes this is the first thing that needs to happen you need to recognize if all of the things that that young man said in that video are true or if any of them are true we have to recognize it first if the same things could be said about another group or if others were doing this, this is the question that you should ask black women. If other groups were doing this to black men, what would you what would your response be? 
Would it be recognition like David? And would you would you be angry about it? Right? Would you recognize that? Because David, because what happens in the next verse is Nathan says to David, "You are the man. You're the one doing this. You've done this to Uriah. Black women, have you? Are you the man? You have you done this to black men? Right? Is what that gentleman in the in the in the video said true? Thus and then thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, I anoint you king. I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you out of the hand of Saul. And then he goes on to explain it. And then verse 13, look at what David says. He recognizes his issue. Right. He says, David says to Nathan or said to Nathan, I have sinned against Yahweh. And Nathan said to David, Yahweh has also has put away your sin. You shall not die. David actually spoke the true punishment that he should have received. Yahweh grants him repentance. I mean, grants him grace to not kill him because he deserved to die for what he did. The law says that he deserved to die, but Yahweh spares him. Okay. He doesn't, he doesn't deserve to live. But what is David's response after he recognizes his sin, after he recognizes that what he's done is wrong. There's a second step, the second R, and I'm giving you three R's. You can see him up there at the top. He repents. Now, I'm not going to read the entire Psalm 51, but you see here in the uninspired right title, the choir master, a Psalm of David. This actually is uh, when Nathan, the prophet went to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. And if you know anything, if you've been in the church, you know, this created me a clean heart, renew a right spirit in me. Oh, God, against you and you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. Right. Blot out my transgression. David is begging God to forgive him. Repentance, which simply means metanoia, the Greek word, the Greek term metanoia just means to change your mind. Right. A moral change. You have to recognize what that what you've done is evil and you need to repent. Right. There's no there's no no other route that's that's going to you. You have to accept responsibility if you are the type of woman that has done this. You have to accept responsibility and you have to change your mind. You have to have a paradigm shift. You have to look at black men in a way that um, or you have to not do those things and look in black, look at black men differently, specifically those that deserve respect and honor. Now, there are some out there who who don't. Um, that That's a that, that's a different video. I'm going to do a different video for them later. Right. My whole channel is going to be about helping them to improve themselves. But but for women specifically, this video is for you. I wanted to talk to you and, and just implore you. These are the three steps you have to recognize first. You need to repent. You have to change your thought pattern. You have to change your mind. OK. And then the second, uh, the third step. This is this is vitally important. Restoration. I want to go to the story of what Zacchaeus, the tax collector. Jesus comes into his house, uh, says salvation has come to to this house today. Zacchaeus stands up and says this because he knows he's been he's done wicked things. Zacchaeus stood Luke 19, 8 and said to the Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. There needs to be restoration. If you have been the type of person that has done these things to specific black men, there needs to be a wholesale restoration between you and that man or any of the men that you've done this to. And in that way, there will be fellowship. There will be renewed fellowship between black, win black men and black women on a larger scale. When those individual issues are taken care of, individually, you begin to respect and honor, um, you know, your the male counterparts. Right. Recognition, repentance and restoration. All right. So if this if this is true of you, let me give you some tips. You have to recognize, I've been saying it, kind of giving you application throughout. If you have to recognize your deeds, you have to recognize that what you've done is wrong. You can't fall back to the idea that um, that you're independent, that you don't need a man. You can't. You have to block out those ideas. You have to recognize when those bad those bad ideas are, are being uh, uh, are being pushed on you and reject them. And the only way that you reject them is by filling it with the true, the good, and the beautiful, which is found in the Word of God, right? Then you need to repent. You have to change your mind. Your paradigm has to shift. You have to uh, agree that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he calls you to these things, to recognition of your sin, repentance from sin, and then restoration. If you have sinned against someone, restore it. You have to do these things. This is important. If we're going to see the black community grow and flourish again, despite all of the negative things that are going on, we have to do these. This is a three-step process. Recognition. Repent. And res restoration. And again, I'm going to do one for the men. The ladies, don't think I'm just coming after you, right? <laughs> okay. But in conclusion, I'm sorry. And then you seek to restore. So don't, don't let me forget. 
seeking to restore. All right. So you have to you have to seek to restore these things. So how can you do that? Again, you treat men with respect, right? Respect, respect men as respect specifically your husbands as head. Right. But respect men as the as the the um, the uh, the head of the human race, specifically in the black community and and encourage, encourage and um, exhort men to continue to be that. Submit to husbands, submit to your husbands, right? Do these types of things. Find a husband, right? Find one, submit to him, bear children, raise them in the fear and admonition of the Lord. And in that way, right, that's that's the restoration, right? So embrace true feminine, true femininity. That's basically the idea, right? Embrace true femininity, the godly femininity that's taught in the scriptures. On Sarah obeyed Abraham and called him Lord, and you are her children if you do, if you do these things and do not fear. Right. So that's the that's the idea. Do that stuff. Do what Sarah did for Abraham. Do what um, ultimately what, what the church is supposed to do to Christ. Submit to him and everything. OK, seek Christ first. Seek the truth that is found in him. All right. And in conclusion, now I know my, my let me bring myself back up here. All right. So in conclusion, I normally uh, I, I have a new a new conclusion where I say until next time. Be on alert. Stand firm in the faith. Act like men. Be strong. Now, women, you can't you can't act like men, but act like women. Right. Be feminine. Be beautiful. Right. Be on alert, though. You still need to be on alert because the culture is trying to change it. So I'm going to change it to be on alert. Stand firm in your femininity. Act like women. Right. Act like women. I'm not even going to say be strong. Right. Well, you can have the strength that have the be be be. Um, what is it? Proverbs 31 says uh, she's clothed in strength. Right. She's clothed in strength. Yeah, you can be clothed in strength. All right. So I'll see y'all on the next one. Okay.